wall. <laughs> my hair is on my microphone. It's like a little mustache. Hello. I would love if I had a mustache. I would absolutely be. Well, I kind of do I already have one. Say if I had a mustache, just like and end the sentence. I was like, okay. <laughs> Weird thought. Oh, no, no, no. Like, I really want the curly. Like, it needs to be, like, well greased and mm -hmm. oiled, and it has to have a nice little curly cue yeah. at the end. I had a coworker. His name was Ryan, and he had that exact mustache. And it was when I was working as a recruiter, and he was coming in for an interview. Mm -hmm. And he called me the day before, and he was like, I have to tell you something about myself. I was like, oh, God, what is it? He goes, I have a mustache. And I was like, okay. And he's like, yeah, but, like. It's a real one. The one with the wax <gasps> and the tip, and I curl it. It's like, do I need to shave before tomorrow? And I was like, if you shave before tomorrow, I'm not giving you this job because I need to fucking you see that mustache. See yeah. And he had the job and he kept the mustache for a good amount of his time there. If you want a job, grow the mustache. <laughs> that's, that's the lesson here. Find a recruiter who needs to see that stash. Show your stash off. Show your stash off. It is so fun to be in person with you. I know. I'm like out of breath because we just lugged Jumped in. in. Oh, and lugged <laughs> in. Yeah, you did all the work. You and Brian. I was like, <laughs> I'm sweating. The whole time I wanted to touch your butt though because those pants look so comfortable. Well, and they were, I have a wedgie. They were like wedged up my butt. You kind of have a little bit of like a mark and I don't know what it's from, but it's- On my butt? A little bit. Well, is it the hole that's there? No. It's like you sat on something and it left like, stand up. Show us your butt. I'm scared. It's not bad. Where it's, is it? It's just like a little like, it's right here. It's like as if you sat in something that's a little bit lighter color and it left a mark. Oh, well, it's a little dirty in here. I had an allergic reaction earlier. I didn't tell you. Why? Why didn't you tell me? And are you okay? Yeah. Brian had to run out. We were like sitting at lunch and I had a spin drift and mm -hmm. I didn't realize that a grapefruit flavored spin drift, number one, didn't realize they used real fruit. Which number is Number two, didn't realize... A grapefruit flavor would have cherry puree in it. So that's I took crazy. One sip, and then I just like looked at the back ingredients because I was like anticipating it saying like grapefruit and lemon or something, mm -hmm. and it said cherry puree, and I was like, <gasps> the only thing that will send me into anaphylactic shock. So what, so, what happened? Well, the grocery store was like literally one block away, so Brian sped over and grabbed Benadryl and came back. I stayed at the restaurant because he was like, if something happens, you need to tell them you're having an allergic reaction so that they can help you. I can't believe this happened today. Two or three hours ago. We almost had a ghost. <laughs> I, <do laughs> I almost one ghost. died. You come into town, I perish. <laughs> okay, well, hi. This is, do you want to introduce us? This is Two Girls, One Ghost. Two Girls, One Ghost. And we are your ghostesses. That's Corinne. Hey. And I'm Sabrina. It's so fun to look at you as a person. <laughs> okay, so I'm staying in Marblehead right now yes. while I'm here in town. We have a bunch of work stuff to do. But last October, <laughs> just aired out. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'll take my socks off. That'll be a solution. Keep your toes uh, hidden. Was it last? No, it was like two years ago now or a year and a half ago in October of 22. I stayed in oh, Marblehead. Oh, yeah. God. I know. Isn't that wild? Like that Time flies. Ago. Yeah. And it was like a very transformational experience for me, mm -hmm. life-wise and also just like being in Marblehead. It's such like a spiritual experience for me. You feel And connected. I was nervous that it was going to be like a one-time thing. I told you this last night yeah. and I got over you're going to drive into the border and then you just feel nothing. Yeah. But it was last night I drove in. I immediately like everything, every part of my body just like relaxed and mm -hmm. shifted. And then this morning I was like, I am going to get in touch. I'm going to meditate. And I meditated for like an hour and I started doing some of the practices that Theo was talking about. Yeah. And I pulled Oracle cards and I like basically out loud spoke to my ancestors and to my spirit guides. And I was like, please like come through to me. And I literally got chills. I'm not kidding. As I said that, my entire body, Sabrina, head to toe, chills. And I pulled cards and I was just like thanking them for being with me. And it felt very, very, very powerful. So I wanted to see if we wanted to start by pulling some Oracle cards today. Okay. But also I feel like, is this not proof that you should just be like move here? Plus, also getting in my car and like driving over is the best thing in the world. So quick. Actually, I posted on my story today and I was like, I give Sabrina one to two years before you actually move back to the East Coast. And your sister messaged me and she was like, I realistically think it's more like six months. And I was like, we're working on her. Wow. Lexi, like, so you and I were trying to chip away at Sabrina's <laughs> resistance to it. Okay. Good to know where y'all stand. Except I just showed my hand. And all of our cards. Honestly, you've been showing them for a long time. Yeah, there's no secrecy <laughs> I'm, there. I'm not trying to manipulate you. So actually, one of our listeners gave these cards to us. They're the Southern Gothic Oracle Cards by Stacey Williams. How do you say that? Williams Ing? We'll post a picture so that you can see what they are if you want to find them. But 
I opened them today and mm-hmm. I basically, as I opened them, I put my hand on them. This was like a very... Do you do like the vibration, like feel the tingle? I think this is the first time, as per Fio's advice, just start practicing. Mm. And I was like, I'm just going to do what just feels do right. And so I did this thing where I put them down on the bed and I put my hand on them. I closed my eyes and I spoke to my ancestors and I said, I would love to utilize this deck of cards, these oracle cards to communicate with you, to understand my past, my present, and my future. And if there are any messages you have for me, please utilize these to share them with me. What did you pull? (laughs) Well, the first thing I pulled was the serpent and it was like, deception. (laughs) And I was like, who's deceiving me? Or am I deceiving myself? Marblehead's deceiving you. Yeah. Trying to trick you into moving there. But I did a two card spread. So I did like my past that has kind of led to where I am. Mm -hmm. And then the second card was a possible solution. Okay. So I really thought about something I was like going through specifically. So I was thinking we could do a one card poll and it could just be for today, for this evening, for life at the moment that we're in. Something and that, you have the information as to what the cards yeah, mean because yeah, yeah. Lord knows I don't know. No, I, I don't know yet either. Um, yeah. But I feel like this is a very natural move for you to go into this because mm-hmm. like a year and a half ago is when you started using Labyrinthos, like the online yeah. Oracle deck. Mm-hmm. I feel like tarot reading, like I don't feel a strong pull to tarot cards. Right. But I've started Except for to the feel. beauty of Claire Goodchild's right, tarot so deck, pretty. which I have up here somewhere, which I bought just because I thought they were so aesthetically pleasing. They are. They are. But I feel like this makes sense for you to read these. I feel very connected to them. Mm-hmm. And I think it's been great. We've gotten so many different decks from people. I would love to do an episode on the difference between tarot and oracle because they are different. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I ended up picking this deck because it was just, it was like in my bedroom before I left to come here. So I was like, oh, I'll just explore this deck. So we'll each pick a one card spread basically and we'll read what it is. We'll start with you. If you want to put your hand on the deck before I shuffle it, this is honestly just intuitive. Like I don't know this is how you're supposed to do it. This is how I feel I should do it. I'm literally trying to force my vibration through the entire deck. You have a strong vibration. I can feel myself being like almost halfway through it. Is that weird? No, that's magic. Magic. You're I'm almost you are magical. End. Okay, so close your eyes and think about something that's been on your mind today or re- recently and ask your spirit guides, I'll ask mine and my ancestors, for some type of message or guidance for you to carry through the rest of the day. I'm staring at you so deeply. <laughs> I'm also speaking shorthand to them. <laughs> so you know that this is a lot that I'm asking where I'm like giving bullet points, <laughs> skipping all the filler words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So now I'm going to shuffle the deck and then I'll have you pick. Pick a card. Your vibration is crazy. Can you feel it? I feel like every time I ever have a reading, the person comments about it where they're like, ugh, <laughs> weird, weird zaps <laughs> coming from you. All right. What did you pull? The Copperhead. Deception and bad influences. That's literally what I pulled earlier. That's so That's weird. What really if you pulled again from me? What if it? my ancestors are really trying to tell me something? What does this mean? Okay. What is the definition? Because I want to show like it to this. Just by, I mean, I wouldn't say bad influences to describe what I asked about, but it it was in oh. line. Interesting. Okay. In Appalachia, there is a set of Pentecostalism called the Church of God with signs following, also known as snake handlers. This is a very real phenomenon which preachers bring poisonous serpents, often captured in the woods near their churches, into the sanctuary to pick them up handle them roughly, and dare the snakes to bite them. It's a very performative way of publicly testing or proving their faith in God. Perhaps the copperhead represents someone in your life who is a bad influence. I hope it's not me. (laughs) And whose input should be avoided as though it were poisonous. I really hope it's not me. (laughs) What if you're asking about me? Okay, I'll tell you what I asked after. Okay, good. Otherwise, it could be your own deep insecurities plaguing your mind with toxic thoughts, making you second guess your own intuition and leading you into poor decisions. If you are experiencing fear or anxiety, now is the time to face your fear head on. Summon your power to recognize and avoid bad influences. Beware of your dark side. The pursuit of unhealthy pleasures could lead you to very bad outcomes. Interesting. Okay. I asked, once I have my child, I know there are going to be ways that I want and Brian wants to go about parenting. The other people in our family, our parents, grandparents, relatives, will not have parented that way. Interesting. I am a very 
strong worded person when it comes to boundaries. You? <laughs> oh, gas. <gasp. laughs> and I basically just asked about navigating without, because people's feelings are going to be hurt regardless when you say something. Yeah. But like trying to set the boundaries and almost reparent parents to like parent the way that you want and to like yeah, respect those hard. boundaries without me. I know that inevitably people's feelings will be hurt, but like trying my best to not hurt people's feelings, but also yeah. being strict and not bending. Because you have to do what's right for you and your kid. Yes. Ultimately, and that's And then it's hard to most. like have the anxiety of someone doing something different than what you want and trusting your child to be cared the way that you want them to be cared mm-hmm. for while also trying to teach the other person in a like respectful way. Right. Basically, I was like, how do I not snap at people? And how much responsibility <laughs> do you actually have to be to take that on? And like at a certain yeah. point, if they can't learn that or understand that, that's yeah. not your job to teach them. Right. Because I know people are going to like people want to express their opinion, opinions, the even when their opinions are not asked for. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's going to be the tough part where it's like, yeah, how do you navigate that conversation where it's like, OK, well, actually, what I'm telling you right now is not a conversation where I'm asking for input or opinions. I'm telling you how something is. Yeah. And if you're not meeting me there, then we're not continuing in I feel like that's the direction exactly that this what is going. I think that's exactly what you say. Thank you, ancestors. <laughs> for that information. I think you nailed it. Got it. Okay, I'll put one for me. Are you going to tell us what you ask, or is this going to be private? I'm truly just asking for a message from my spirit guides for today. I'm very general, broad. Okay. What should I okay. meditate on for the day? Kind of. Mm-hmm. I pulled black coffee, shadow work, and awakening. Huh. Card number 27. This is beautiful, too. And we are drinking black coffee. Yeah. Also, awakening and you being in Marblehead where you do feel awakened every time you're here. I mean, I kind of – and also today is the first day that I was like, I'm going to pull cards. Hmm. I'm going to meditate. Okay, card number 27. Darkness. Black, inky, deep darkness is a key ingredient to a balanced life. Black coffee with its jolt of caffeine is a good signifier of the awakening you need right now. Will it be sweet and creamy or bitter like pure black coffee? Gazing into the darkness is a necessary part of adulthood. We fear and dread facing painful situations such as conflict, grief, and loss, but avoiding reality because it hurts is unhealthy. Coffee symbolizes awakening, which indicates that you are perhaps now, in some sense, asleep. Hmm. If you remain in the twilight of your memories, you are not avoiding the dark, but wallowing in it. In order to see light again, you will need to step forward with courage to embrace your unique opportunities and future. Shadow work is about letting go. Letting go is about forgetting, in a sense. Sip the coffee. Blink your eyes. A new day has dawned. Interesting. To chop off the strings that are tethering you to the past or making you question whether to still participate in things (laughs) and move to Marblehead. Like, just (laughs) leave LA. I don't know how much more clear that could be. (laughs) Who needs oracle cards when you have Corinne? (laughs) (laughs) What I'm reading is... I don't even get need your cards. feet out of the LA mud and come touch grass in New England. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will say, as I was driving here, I was like, I just love New England, and I feel just like my brain feels quiet when mm-hmm. I'm here in a, mm-hmm. in a really nice way. Yeah. Anyway, this is an encounters <sighs> episode. Now I just I don't want to do the podcast right now. I want to just sit and meditate now for an hour and close. Do you my guys want to watch us just sit and lay? <sighs> Crack a window. <sighs> Where are the birds? Chirp chirp. Oh, no. chirp, 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 chirp. <laughs> If anybody lives in the city and they miss birds, just call just me listen Sabrina. Chirp, 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 That was like a You frog. for sure are. <laughs> I know for a fact. You, what? I saw a rare bird in my bush the other day. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I can't even remember the name of it. My mom and I were so excited. She spotted it. She goes, oh, look at that bird. That tail is different. And I was immediately Googling. And it says it was a rare find on my Merlin ID app. This is so just so you. incredible because I totally picture you in this office, like after recording, staring out the window, practicing your bird yeah. calls. And I feel like I just witnessed this. Like it, well, also, it's real. What's upsetting about this experience too is that my dad was here. We were all supposed to be helping him. And he was like, 
on his hands and knees doing like joint compound and sanding and sweating. And my mom and I are just like hands behind our back, looking out out the the windows, being like, oh, my God, a blue gray gnat catcher. Because that's what we saw. (laughs) Wow. Beautiful. Love birds. Love birds. Okay, so we are your bird (sighs) soundtrack. And we are here to discuss ghosts. Ghosts. (laughs) Natural transition. Birds to ghosts. Birds to ghosts. Same, same. Well, they are very spiritual. They fly. They travel in very strange, peculiar ways, different to human beings. Mm -hmm. So they're very intelligent. They are. I'm very fully embracing my crow crow phase. (laughs) Feral February is concluding and we're into March or April. uh, There needs to be alliteration. The croning. (laughs) The croning. uh, But there needs to be some alliteration. Okay, let's go. March madness <laughs> Ma- magpie march oh that's fun okay <laughs> just Mur- go murder sh- shit oh, on murder. all the pools march murder because crows murder a march ma- murder. March murder voila <laughs> we did it <laughs> hooray hooray okay i feel like we've been on this for three hours <sighs> okay i have some short stories so i'll start Alrighty. i went kind of animal-ish family-ish themed Okay. I feel like you've been going, this has been... Trying to lighten. Lighten the mood. Okay. <laughs> trying to play uh, to the room, which is seasonal depression. I was going to say, I'm and in this room and uh, you're not playing to me. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm trying to play to the environment that I live in, which is where <laughs> everyone is sad. So <laughs> we're going lighter. You're, you went from ish. like encouraging me to come to be like, hey... Well, actually, I would have year-round depression. Yeah, so it doesn't matter for you. That's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, nothing will change. <laughs> nothing will change here. Uh, okay. This is called Disappearing Doggo, the story of Gone Gary. <laughs> I love it. Gone Gary. Gone Gary. I love alliteration. Okay. Hello, ghostesses with the mostess. Is. <laughs> <laughs> you knew I forgot the last part of that. <laughs> Me too. I recently found your podcast, and I've really been enjoying listening to you on my way to and from work. You guys have really improved my commute and have given me something to look forward to. I've had some standard spooky ghost experiences like footsteps, shadow figures, lights flickering, but I don't have an explanation for this one. I used to dog sit in addition to my muggle job. (laughs) I like how it makes it seem like dog sitting is not the muggle job. That's the magical job. It's the magical job, Mm -hmm. yes. And one of my families that I dog sat for had two bulldogs. This story is about Gary. Yes, Gary with an I. Oh, G A R I, Gary. Oh, it's like Jeff. (laughs) My name is Jeff. One of the first loves of my life, and he had chocolate chip ears, and that's what (gasps) his mama used to call them. Stop. He had a sweet, smushy face, and Gary was an absolute goofball. Mm. He has since passed away, and he will always be in my heart. Sorry, I could go on about Gary, but I really should get to the story. <laughs> this is the best person to be a dog walker. Oh, 100%. Like, oh, Gary, I think about him forever. For all the He's time. So cute. Yeah. For context, let me give you a layout of this house. It was okay. a small two-bedroom, one-bath house with a large bonus room, probably half the square footage. And this bonus room was attached to the kitchen. When you walk in the front door, you were in the living room, and then the kitchen and the bonus room were to your left, and the two bedrooms straight ahead, and then the bathroom door was tucked around the corner. When I was lucky enough to take care of these guys, we spent most of our time in the bonus room. Can I just say, whenever people tell us the layout of the house, it goes in one ear and out the other. And I cannot, like, I need a visual representation. Me too. Yeah. And then all I started doing in my head was like... Send us a Sims layout. Yeah, Yeah, literally. (laughs) I need a blueprint. In in order to send your story, we need a full Sims house. Or you can just omit that sentence because it's... (laughs) Well, maybe some people understand it, but we don't. We We surely don't. don't. Just one big room to me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> if i closed the door to the bonus room to go to the kitchen gary would scratch to be let out one night i was playing with gary and we were chasing each other around the bonus room as i was running up to him i suddenly realized that he was gone he had literally just been three feet from me and looking back and running with his booty tucked under <laughs> what does that mean i i think he's like hunched hunched down like i don't know like, Probably oh, like a scoot a little excited bit? Excited and like maybe like a mid-hump run. Okay. You know? Yeah. Kind of. Getting, getting real excited. It's like a, remember when I was dog sitting Nikita's dog and, oh, and, and Rolly was like kind of running, running and humping at yeah. the same time? Okay. Okay. I think that's how I'm picturing it. 
It didn't feel like he disappeared before my eyes, more like I felt a fog for a second and then he Hmm. wasn't there anymore. So I was confused. I called his name, but there was no sign of him. It's not like I blinked and he ran out of the room and into the kitchen. If I had, I would have clearly heard the clickety-clack of his nails on the wood floor as he scrambled across it. So I felt a bit insane. How the hell does someone lose a 50-pound bulldog? For some reason, in my head, I kept picturing an otherworldly pair of hands reaching through the wall to grab Gary. So I searched the house, and my heart was pounding. Did he go outside? How would he have gotten outside? The doors were closed. So I walked through the kitchen and through the living room, calling his name. I noticed the bathroom door was closed, and I kept walking, and there was no sign of Gary. What the fuck is happening? How do I explain this to Gary's mom? How did I not see where Gary went? What is wrong with me? Am I insane? I was terrified. I kept picturing these hands reaching through the wall, and I kept pacing, and I walked around the corner, and now I don't remember exactly what made me go into the bathroom, but I do remember the feeling, in retrospect, that it was like my brain wasn't noticing the bathroom's existence. I don't know how to explain it, but eventually I did open the bathroom door, and there was Gary, completely silent, just sitting. In the bathroom? Yes, in the closed bathroom. And the door's closed? Yep. The bathroom shares a wall with the bonus room, but it does have access to it. You have to walk all the way to the opposite side of the house. And I had been yelling his name and I didn't hear any footsteps running across the house when he had disappeared. It was like he was just there and I couldn't explain it. Hmm. That night I slept with the lights on (laughs) and both pups on the bed with me. I felt like something was watching us and I don't have an explanation as for what happened that night. Gary's mom was a really lovely person and she had a beautiful home. I noticed the energy shifted and was a bit heavy in the house. Hmm. the next few times that I went to stay there. Gary was worth it, though. It still gives me chills when I think about that night. My sister thinks that I was abducted. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that she was abducted. Yeah, that's interesting. I feel like something negative was feeding on Gare Bear's energy, like the dog in Oculus. I could just be bash it crazy, though. (laughs) I would love to hear your take. I hope you have a spooktacular day. See you on the other side. M. Okay, I feel like... M's gut of being like there was something negative must be telling us something, but I don't want to believe it was negative. And just how much love M shares for Gary, I'm like, well, if I'm a ghost, I want Gary too. And I'm just picturing, yeah, I just picture a ghost doing exactly what M thought, like grabbing, yeah, hands to the wall, grabbing Gary, squishing him. Yes, it also makes me wonder about. Okay, so we've heard so many times where people who experience the paranormal, even if they're in another group of people, Mm -hmm. sometimes what they hear and experience is completely different than the other person in the room. Right. So I almost wonder if like because the spirit was so close to Gary, if maybe there was this like sound vortex where like he did he did run away, but M couldn't hear the clickety clack because it was like this this sound bubble paranormal sound bubble where only Gary and the spirit existed (laughs) for a moment. It was, like, so beautiful. It was just, like, a moment of, like, the two. I just imagine, like, the ghost and Gary embracing and swinging each other around with this beautiful song playing. I know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'll be there. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And then maybe the time slows for them. (laughs) It's, like, three hours past. They're They're holding hands (laughs) and they're running in the circle. (laughs) Suddenly it's, like, a grassy knoll behind them. (laughs) I feel like we just shared Beautiful. we just shared a visual. Yeah. It's it's not our vision, it's Gary's it's vision because that's what happened to Gary <laughs> that night. The end. Yeah. Mystery solved. It also makes me wonder. So they were playing. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And so could the spirit think that they were playing hide and seek and was like, I'm gonna help my man Gary out. Oh. Come with me. Picks him up, runs him into the bathroom, closes the door. Mm. She'll never find us. And took a long time. Yeah. Ghost is right. Because also, like, he's a bulldog. He breathes. He's big. I also was a dog walker. I walked a 50-pound bulldog named Mulligan. Mulligan. And Mulligan couldn't take a step without... The panting, yeah. Yes, you heard that guy. Yeah, they're not quiet. And if quiet. he closed the door to the bathroom, you would hear it. Peculiar. I picked a theme. Similar to me. Yeah. I also picked a theme because last time you picked a theme and then I was left out with a theme. And so I made my own theme today. Great. Well, I made my own theme still, too. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe next time we can get on the same page. <laughs> Maybe. Actually, no, I kind of like when we don't know what each other's picking. Because sometimes it's like, remember when we 
both picked stories where the people had picked up and moved, moved their, their houses. houses. Yeah. I literally told Brian about that because I was like, what are the chances we even had two emails about that in right. our inbox? And then we both picked them and had On no- the same yeah. exact. You're glowing. Like I can't get, I can't stop looking at you. The sun, baby. No, you look like you're stunning. Well, it's the makeup. No, but It's the Laura Mercier. No, it's the hourglass. Can you give me yeah, a, a makeup tutorial? Will you do my makeup tutorial? It's literally just like one palette thing. And then you put- Okay, well, can I'll show you show you. me? It's from Hourglass. But it does make you, it's like a little bit less sparkly and a little more glowy. It's beautiful. Thanks. You're beautiful. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> that was like such a good... <laughs> You're like, I can't take this compliment. I Let me make a weird sound. I hate being complimented. I was twitching. Like, don't <laughs> look at me. <laughs> don't compliment me. <laughs> don't give me attention. Everyone stare at Corinne right now. Guys, I'm Talk fine. I don't need it. It's just making my... I never had social anxiety until COVID, and now I have an immense amount. Oh. It ruined me. I'm here with as you. I, as I like, you make eye contact, I immediately look anxiety. down. Anxiety. Like, oh, what's happening in this coffee? Way more interesting. Anxiety. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> We're in it together. I also self-diagnose myself with a bunch of things all the you? time. So. <laughs> WebMD is your best friend. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. This is from our listener, Emily. It is called Here We Go with yet another Ouija board experience. Okay. Okay. Of course. Hello, Corinne and Sabrina and Leah. I'm going right into the story. Great. My older sister and I decided to have a seance a few days ago. <laughs> Family bonding moment. Yeah. This was back in 2019. But this is one of the most emotional experiences for me. So I opened the board, did my introduction, only positive spirits, explaining the board, etc. I asked, is anyone there? The planchette moved to... Yes. I asked, have we talked to you before? Planchette. Yes. Can you spell your name? The planchette moved to the letter Q and it just stayed there. So I asked, is your name Q? The planchette moved very quickly up to no. So I asked, can you spell your name for me again? This time it spelled out J-E-W-E-L. In 2014, my mom's only sister passed away from pancreatic cancer. She had been diagnosed around Thanksgiving and passed away right around Easter. My Aunt Jewel had been my grandmother's first child who was born on my grandma's 20th birthday. Oh, my gosh. Which I was thinking as soon as you spelled out Jewel, I was like, I've only ever heard that name one time, and it's the musician. So it's like it's, – Right. It's a unique name. It's a name. very unique name. I don't quite remember what all the questions we asked in the beginning because I'm somewhat skeptical, but not after this experience. So I asked. Do you have any messages that you would like us to give to anyone? Planchette moves to yes. I asked who? Planchette spells out Y-O-U. You. I asked, you have a message for Emily? Planchette moved to yes. I asked, what do you want to say to me? The planchette moved to T-H-A-N-K. Y-O-U. Thank you. I asked, can I ask why you're thanking me? The planchette slowly spelled out H-O-L-D-I-N-G-M-Y-H-A-N-D, <laughs> holding my hand. When my aunt passed away, I had been horrified of the situation at the time, and I didn't know what to do. I had never seen someone die before, let alone someone I loved. So I sat in the corner next to my aunt, and I held her hand through the last few minutes of her life. It felt so yeah. long, but they weren't even long enough. And I can remember focusing so hard on her hand because I didn't want to look around the room or think about what was happening. And the hardest part in the moment was when they announced her time of death. And all I could see as I stared at her hands was my grandmother. So at this point in the seance, I'm crying hysterically. I wasn't even able to read what the board was saying out loud anymore. But I told her, you're welcome. I would do it again if I could. I asked then, do you have any other messages for anyone? The planchette said yes. And I asked, who is your message for? It spelled out the name Clara. Clara is my Aunt Jewel's only child that she had. My cousin was in her early 20s when her mom passed away, leaving her with no one. Clara never had a relationship with her father, and the only thing that she had ever known was her mom. So I asked, what do you want me to tell her? The planchette spelled out, those boys are beautiful. My cousin Clara has had two sons that never got to meet their grandma because she passed away before the eldest was born. Wow. I told her that I would make sure to let her know. And then I asked, is there anyone else you have a message for? 
The planchette said, your mom. This could be a punchline. I was just going to say, it feels like a joke. <laughs> your mom. Your mom. <laughs> I asked, what's my mom's name? The planchette spelled J-E-A-N, which is my mother's name. I asked, what do you want me to tell my mom? The planchette spelled multiple phrases. I'm happy. Don't cry. I love you. This is... Uh, like the most clear Ouija board experience I've ever heard. I know. Oh my God, Jewel's so strong. What so a strong, strong presence. And very straight to the point. I am curious too, because it sounds like Emily and her sister do this a lot. Mm-hmm. If this was the first time speaking to Jewel. Yeah. Or, I don't know. Anyway, I told my aunt that I would make sure to tell my mom because I know my mom needed to hear it. When I told my mom about what happened, my mom started to cry and said, she probably said that because every time I think about her, I cry. She asked me to hug and kiss my grandparents for her and signed off with a big wet one. I asked, is anyone else there with you? Planchette said, yes. I asked how many other people are there with you and the planchette moved to the number three. I asked if they could spell the names of who was with her. The planchette spelled out three names, Max, May, and Leroy. Max and May are both my paternal great-grandparents, and Leroy is my paternal grandfather. I asked, does anyone that's with you want to talk to us? The planchette said yes. I asked, who? Planchette spelled out Leroy. I said hello to my grandpa, who I haven't seen since I was six years old because he passed away from brain cancer. Jeez. Eventually, I did the thing of asking if he had any messages for anyone, and he said yes, and the message was for you both. So I asked, what do you want us to know? The planchette spelled, I am so sorry. We looked at the board and my sister and I both asked, why are you sorry? The planchette spelled out, your dad. My father has been the definition of a deadbeat father. He lives 30 minutes away from me and I haven't seen or spoken to him in over five years. He doesn't call on birthdays, holidays, and hasn't since I was young. So my sister and I both told our grandfather, Leroy, that it wasn't his fault that you died when we were so young. The planchette spelled out, I taught him better. At this point, snot is literally running down my face, but I was worried about taking my hands off the planchette, so I just let it happen and said out loud, I miss you. And the planchette spelled out my peaches. If I hadn't been losing it before, oh my God, did I lose it this time. (laughs) When I was a small kid, I used to have to come visit my father every summer for six weeks. But since he was a farmer and he was always out in the fields, I generally stayed with my grandpa Leroy and grandma Hazel during the day while he was working. My grandpa always ate canned peaches and I'd climb up into his lap and eat them with him. And after that, he always called me peaches. After he passed away, my grandma got a cat and named her peaches. She told me that when I was older, that peaches, 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 peaches. It's so cute. My grandma told me that when I was older, whenever peaches would sleep next to her in bed, she still always felt like my grandpa was there with her. That's so sweet. So here I am hysterically crying at this point and the planchette kept moving around spelling, I love you. I love you both. And Finally, we asked if there's anything else they wanted us to know before they left, and the planchette said no. I asked, are you ready for us to let you go? And the planchette spelled out, I love you. Without any effort from my end or my sister's, the planchette moved down to goodbye, and it was over. So like the spirits closed out the session for them. Oh my gosh, I kept my mind is racing. This is the first time I've ever talked to someone, and they had a message for me. I won't lie and say that it wasn't nice to know that even from the other side, my dad's father is throwing shade, (laughs) but it also breaks my heart that he's had to witness the countless emotional disappointments and devastations that my sister and I have gone through after he, my grandfather, passed away. That's what I was going to say when he first was like, I'm sorry for your dad. I taught him better. I'm like, oh, I hate the thought that someone on the other side is feeling this guilt and can't just like release it. Right. Which maybe he could as soon as, you know, like they. Yeah. It also feels like a way for the grandfather to step in like a parent. Like it's almost like your father should be saying this. Right. And he can't, but so I will. And hopefully that offers them some solace. Right. I used to try to make myself feel better when I was a kid and bad storms would come through. I'd always tell myself that lightning wasn't anything to be afraid of. And that was probably just my grandpa taking a picture of me. (laughs) I was too young trying to understand any of this stuff at that point. But now I'm not so sure if I wasn't right. I believe my grandfather is looking over us, Emily. Wow. That's beautiful. Isn't it? It's wild. Like, oh my God. If they had any issues with people in this lifetime, like, don't even worry because they have the strongest, most supportive people on the other side. Yeah. Just coming in. Affirmations. Love, love, positive wishes, so much love, acceptance, recognition, Ugh. like everything. 
and appreciation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. They're so cared for. So loved. Wow. Also, isn't it so unlike me to have picked a beautiful story? It is. <laughs> Are you proud? Yeah, I'm so proud. Marblehead is <laughs> way It's really on me. changing you. <laughs> you've, you've been here for eight hours again, and it's it's already done something. What did your parents tell you thunder and lightning was growing up? Um, That it was thunder and lightning. Oh, really? But it was like, they made it kind of fun. There was still the fear of like, you can't go near the windows. Mm-hmm. We're not going to do that. But my mom would have us go into the closet or like play a board game. Normally, oh, when we were really fun. young and we were scared, it would almost be like we were camping, like a slumber party in the closet. So we'd mm-hmm. go into my brother's that's closet fun. with like pillows and blankets. Yeah. And then we would count in between the whatever, like the thunder, thunder or whatever, and, to see yeah. how far away it was. And we would mm-hmm. track it. Yeah. It was like this fun thing. That's what we did. But too. we'd play board games in between. Oh, so we'd be like cute. doing Yahtzee and then the thunder would happen. We'd be like, oh, One, how long has it been? Two. Yeah. Yes. That's fun. Yeah. My mom told us that it was the gods and angels bowling. Oh. And that thunder was like them hitting the bowling pins. So it's kind of like Stephanie Myers, what she wrote into the Twilight series where yeah, it's, it's the it's vampires the and the f- it's the baseball playing baseball. Game. Yeah. And then the, the lightning was like when someone got a strike and they partied. They like all celebrated. Oh, wait, that's really fun. Yeah. I like that. So you had a dog growing up. Was he afraid? Uh, we had multiple dogs. Uh, I don't know. Some of them were afraid. I can't remember if Keisha was, but yes. You had a dog named Keisha? Mm-hmm. And, and now she was a Kesha. quiche hound. <laughs> the show, oh my God. Keisha, the quiche hound. What a little quiche. Yeah, so she was cute. a great dog. Wrinkles was not afraid of like fireworks or thunder mm-hmm. or lightning or anything, but he was afraid of cats. <laughs> cats can be scary. <laughs> So he really knew. He prioritized what, <laughs> what is actually a threat. fear worthy in this life. And it's definitely the neighborhood cats. <laughs> Screw everything Stay else. Stay away from the cats. Yeah. Okay. So I know I was like, oh, I theme this kind of like animal-ish related. This one is sad. <laughs> this is. Oh, no. This is not happy at all. And so I'll preface that. Okay. A trigger warning for animal Death. Why did I do this? Why did I pick this? I don't know, but okay. I'm reading it. So it's well, called 13 Halloween Puppies. Oh my. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I know. Okay. Why is my reaction to like smile and laugh when I feel <laughs> absolute <laughs> horror <laughs> inside and I'm like dreading reading it, but I'm also like <laughs> nervousness. It's nervousness. Yeah. Cause it's okay. Trigger warning animal death and a lot of it. Okay. I know how much. <laughs> You lovely ghostesses love Halloween, so I have to share this story. <sighs> I've been anxiously awaiting the arrival of my dog, Roxy's puppies, and finally, after about nine weeks of waiting on Halloween night, it was time. Roxy was sitting on my lap when her water broke. Ew. freaking gross. <laughs> Anyways, I put the disgust aside, and I focused on getting my baby situated, and I tried to make her as comfortable as possible to give birth to these puppies that I'd been poking at and trying to count in her belly for weeks. Once Roxy was situated, the puppies began coming. One, two, three. Yay, they're so cute. Four, five, six, seven. Oh my gosh, when the fuck are they going to (laughs) stop? Fear Sunken had all of my poking in her belly to count the puppies during the pregnancy cause them to multiply like gremlins? It would be my luck. I won't pour water on them just in case. Eight, nine, ten, eleven have now arrived. And by now, it was almost midnight. Roxy was exhausted. Poor little Roxy. I know. I'm also picturing like a little Chewini with a name Roxy. Oh. Maybe that's because I know like a Chewini named Roxy. <laughs> so I'm picturing little Roxy. Of course, how could Roxy not be exhausted? One puppy would probably be exhausting enough. And this little hussy, she just gave birth to 11. Finally, there were no more movements or whimpers. Whew, she's done. Wrong again. Oh my God. Now it's a little after midnight and sadly it's no longer Halloween. Over the next hour, two more beautiful puppies arrived. Once all the puppies were situated, I began taking pictures of each puppy. Now that there's a moment to relax and enjoy these beautiful little four-legged creatures, I realized just how freaking cool this was. We just had 13 puppies on Halloween. Spooky. Cool. I I feel like I haven't breathed. I know because you're waiting for it to Because I'm like, where's, yeah, okay. I know. I have to work in the morning, so off to bed I go. And when I woke up, I went to check on the puppies and on Roxy, and to my dismay, puppy 13 was laying off to the side of the litter, dead. Aww. He must have passed in his sleep as I couldn't find anything noticeably wrong. 
So I apologized to Roxy. I bawled my eyes out. I wrapped him in a towel and I put him in the garage until I could bury him later when I returned from work. Mm -hmm. I did a nervous triple check on all the puppies and mom and then I left for work. Fast forward a few hours later, I return home and I find puppy 12 dead. What the fuck? Super confused, I went into panic mode, hoping that the rest of the puppies would be okay. I removed the newly found dead puppy and I ran to Walmart to get puppy pads and other necessities that I thought might help take care of these babies. And while there, I got the pictures printed of the puppies and then I went home to stalk and obsess over the safety of my dog and her puppies. It wasn't until I got home and looked at the pictures that I realized both of the puppies that were born after midnight when it was no longer Halloween did not show up in their pictures. Oh. There were fuzzy, blurry blobs where they should have been in every single picture taken. I get chills. That's wild. (laughs) And they write, I still get chills thinking about this. However, when I think about my experience in this house, it does make sense because people would talk about this woman that they saw in one of the guest rooms, and my dogs would spend hours refusing to go into the kitchen and just sit there and growl. So trust your pets, people. Trust your pets. I also had a lot of false awakenings with lucid nightmares. And okay, Mm -hmm. my last thing, I probably should say that this is also the creepiest. The front door would open by itself. And of course, my dumbass would always say, come on in. What the fuck was I thinking? (laughs) I'd never do that now. There were so many nights I would wake up with the front door open, even though I know I locked that shit. That's and so my goat, creepy. Damien, <laughs> would be standing in the middle of my living room. Damien! <laughs> Damien the goat just... <laughs> I'm Mom, sorry. Someone let me in. <laughs> You've made a mistake by naming your goat Damien. You've set yourself up to be terrified, to wake up to your goat <laughs> named know. Damien in the middle of your foyer. <laughs> like, know. are you kidding me? <laughs> and the door was locked. And every single time, is it Damien? Or is someone else letting Damien in? That's the question. Oh is Damien actually also possessed by a spirit? Gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> so Damien would be standing in the middle of my living room. How was I so clueless? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my ramblings. I'll try to dig through old pictures and find the ghost puppy gremlin angel blob pictures. See you on the other side, Crystal. Okay, that was not as sad as I thought it was going to be. I was still two really, puppies. Died. I know. At least not all 13. That's what I was so nervous yeah, about. So, uh, yeah. I'm glad I made it seem worse so that we could all be relieved. A little bit relieved yeah. that it wasn't as tra- It's still tragic. tragic but, like, but not not as tragic. Not mass puppy death on Halloween. Yeah. But it's weird. That's interesting. It wouldn't have been as weird about like the last two dying because I'm like, okay, well, they're like, you know, the runt of the litter sure. or whatever, probably. 13 is a really big litter to have. It's huge. But the fact that they were not clear in any, any of the photos and every other puppy is. That's but what's weird. fuzzy little blobs. That is very weird. Like, I almost wonder if, I don't know how this would work, but like with that many puppies, like, is there something in the universe where not enough souls were delivered? Oh, they're just like empty vessels. Yeah. And that's why they don't show up because there was yeah. no like, mm-hmm. but I feel like that's such a good way out there what if like I don't I just don't know how else to right put it together and it was the two that came after midnight too so it's just like weird it was like the two that were born on Halloween they were the last two and then they didn't show up in any of the photos so wild it is wow maybe they were meant to be Halloween puppies and because they didn't come on Halloween they're like we'll try again next year (laughs) it is very sad but I am glad that yeah. The others survived and that Roxy was okay because I know. that is a lot to go through. A lot of It's a lot birth of puppies. And... My question is, I feel like lately you've been looking up pet stories, but there's also been a lot of birth and pregnancy in your stories. Do you think that is are you consciously searching that? No. Okay. I don't think so. Cause I've noticed that. Well, recently. we had a pet theme, and so I think I picked these because they oh. recently we had a pet theme and I was like, I want to read these ones okay. too. Okay. And the other ones I haven't like done a new search in our okay inbox. Like I was reading ones that I'd picked out from the past. Like interesting. I don't know, but then again, I I have no idea. But also, I usually try to pick the lighter ones, which have to. It usually involves that sort of stuff. That's true. I think now we're just realize we're thinking about it because we're connecting. We're connecting it to you. But I think I always was picking like familial love, love guardians, guardians. Yeah, yeah. I think I do pick those more. You do lean towards those. Okay, I have a story from our listener, Ashley, and it's called Hearing Things and a Bloody Mary Story. So I ended up picking, my theme was not necessarily Ouija boards, but it was like games, like childhood Mm. games. Mm. Hi, ladies. I hope you're doing well. 
I have more stories for you, but I kept this one strictly to things that I've heard. Throughout my haunted years, I've heard many spooky things. Unfortunately, I have a pretty spotty memory, so I remember very few things in details. But I'm going to start with the earliest thing I do remember. While I was in middle school or early high school, don't remember, lol, bad detail memory, I was having a sleepover with my best friend, Emma. There's a lot of M's. There's a lot of M's. What do we do here? Is there a message from an M? We always stayed up late and chatted and giggled. My sister was out late and we heard her come home. I know everyone in my family's footsteps because our bedrooms were in the basement. We were talking about this recently too. Like, you know mm-hmm. how people walk. Yeah. So I'm not sure what time at night it was, but it was very quiet and dark and I couldn't see anything. I also kept my bedroom door open for my cat to go in and out. So the sounds from the basement living room weren't muffled. It started upstairs. We could hear footsteps walking across the kitchen, then down the stairs. They weren't heavy, but they were noticeable and I didn't recognize them. Emma heard them too, and I could feel her shift towards me. They start coming down the stairs, into the carpeted basement. Footsteps on carpet aren't hard to hear when everything is quiet. They make a little noise from the feet sliding across. So these footsteps cross through the living room. Emma and I are glued together, and I'm extra freaked out because my door is open, and my biggest fear is seeing something in that doorway. But the footsteps pass, and we heard my sister's bedroom door open, and the footsteps went in. We were awake for a few more hours whispering, what the fuck? (laughs) <laughs> to each other, and we never heard the footsteps leave my sister's room. I'm curious if she had a boy over. Yeah. The next morning, my sister asked me if I came into her room last night. I just stood there for a bit. No, I did not. She, since that night, hated sleeping in the basement. In that same house, I've heard things rolling around on the first floor in the middle of the night, right above my bedroom. I've heard people talking, pots of hands falling, but then when I would go up, nothing was misplaced. Next story. I used to work alone in an old building in my hometown that sold party and craft supplies. I'd hear footsteps and things falling in there, but there was never any evidence that something actually fell. One day, a woman came into the store and told me that there was a spirit of a young man in the store and asked if I was scared of him. (laughs) Why should you be? That's terrifying. That's a very ominous thing. There's a man in the store. Are you scared of him? It's like horrifying. The way you said that, you used the inflection that my old boss, Carrie, who I love so much. Really? That's, I feel like that's exactly how she would deliver that line. <laughs> I just messaged her the other day. I was like, can we get together? Oh, <laughs> I miss her. Well, I just gave you a, t- yeah, a taste you gave of me, her. And now I miss her more. <laughs> I said no, uh, but I, that the loud noises sometimes startle me, but it wasn't ominous. She said, good. He isn't bad. I never learned any more about who this man was, but the noises continued as did the feeling of being watched. I just imagine this woman going in, saying these things and walking out. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? Okay, my last story. When I was living with my grandmother while taking a gap year between university, I slept in their guest bedroom on the first floor. One night when I had just gone to bed and hadn't even come close to falling asleep as I was on my phone scrolling through Instagram, I heard a woman talking. I could tell that the voice was coming from the basement because it sounded a bit teeny as if it was coming through the vents connected to the basement. She had a deep voice and I didn't recognize it. It wasn't someone I knew. And I could feel all of my hair stand on end and my whole body felt heated, which is something that happens to me anytime I felt a presence. The voice, however, stayed in the basement and I eventually fell asleep. The next morning, I sat down in the front of the kitchen island with a cup of coffee and my grandmother walked into the room and asked me, were you on the phone last night? And I said, no. She answered, oh, I could hear someone talking downstairs all night. Oh my gosh. These things didn't really scare me much, but I felt terrible knowing that whatever was attached to me was now in my grandmother's house. Yeah. We haven't heard the voice since, but I do sometimes get that feeling if I'm sleeping in a house and I haven't been cleansed, blessed, and yelled at. P.S. This last story has been in my drafts for a while, and I just listened to the Urban Legends episode, but I've got a good Bloody Mary story. Great. I used to do community theater when I was in middle school and high school. During one of our productions, which I think was Charlotte's Web, a bunch of the younger kids went into the bathroom to do Bloody Mary. I had been in the bathroom. And I heard them coming in and start talking about it. Ah! But they're like, we'll only do it with the lights on. So I came up with a plan. (gasps) I love this. This is already reminding me of Bloody Joey. Remember? This is why I found it. I truly, I was thinking about Bloody Joey and I was like, I wonder if we have more stories like this. Okay. So I jump out of the stall and I say, wait, I don't want to be in here when you do it. So I finish using the (laughs) bathroom. I feel like that would make me scream. (laughs) (laughs) At least all the lights are on. Yeah. So I finished using the bathroom. I washed my hands. And instead of actually leaving the bathroom, I opened the heavy entrance door and then closed it loudly. The younger girls waited a couple of seconds and then began chanting, 
Bloody Mary. As they said the third time, I flipped the lights off and the room plunged into darkness. (laughs) There are no windows and the screams were so loud. I made a quick escape into the hallway and hid around the corner as the girl sprinted out the bathroom around the corner. Oh. A little while later, after they had calmed down, I recruited my friend, Emma, the same one from the earlier story, to help me with the second part of the plan. There was a small closet area that all the kids were scared of that had a little staircase that led up into an attic, and all the kids knew it was haunted. So I went into the closet area, lights off, and Emma corralled the kids that did Bloody Mary and said, you guys, Ashley's possessed. I don't know what to do. And so I was sitting in that little closet. Here, I'm going to act this out. (laughs) Crisscross on the floor with my long black hair covering my face. And when they came, I just said a whole bunch of cryptic, creepy shit and freaked the hell out (laughs) of the kids. And so, yeah, that's how I scarred a bunch of kids for life and also made them avoid me for the rest of production. A few years ago, I became good friends with one of the girls that had done Bloody Mary in the bathroom. And I told her it was actually me who turned the lights off. And I don't think she really enjoyed it. She had mixed feelings about that. Oh, stay spooky. They probably told so many people about their authentic paranormal experience. Or she was like so scarred by it and was like, you fuck. Like, yeah, you. Why would you ever? Why would you ever traumatize someone? Right. Anyway, that's from Ashley. Dang, Ashley. (laughs) I think you did the right thing. I love that story so much. It makes me wonder like what I would do if I were in that situation. Well, I would for sure be the person who turned the lights off. Yeah. Part of me feels like I wouldn't, but like, would it be even scarier to be the person that's like, wait, I have crystals in my purse. You need to hold these for protection. Like really mm. worry people about what they were about to do. I think it depends on who it. they are. Yeah. If you need to teach them a lesson, <laughs> maybe you turn the lights off. I've never encountered anyone playing Bloody Mary, but just like out in the wild. Oh, actually, I don't think I have either. We got to spend more time in bathrooms. I know. Catch me at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> Just post up in the Macy's bathroom. I, I wonder. Waiting. I wonder what the most common public bathroom that Bloody Mary is played in is. Probably school. That's true. Has to be right. Yeah, like I'm thinking about Starbucks and those types of bathrooms. They're usually one holers, or I feel like you're not necessarily going with a group no. of girlfriends. McDonald's, maybe. Yeah, because like pre- preteens. Yeah. yeah. A home or a school, I feel like those are probably yeah, the most home common. Yeah, or school, probably. Yeah. A school is the only place I ever played Bloody Mary. I time. played at home. My mom has told me, I think I said this, but my mom swears she got scratched by Bloody Mary. How old was she? I'll have to ask her. Yeah. Because I'm picturing like a 45-year-old Aurora playing Bloody <laughs> Mary in her <laughs> primary playing uh, with us en suite bathroom. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I will be the mother who's playing Bloody Mary. <laughs> Makes me kind of want a Bloody Mary right now. Well, obviously I won't, but, but I want one. You can do a, a just one tomato one. juice. Just tomato juice. I want horseradish. Oh, that's an interesting craving. Really strong horseradish. As I have acid reflux and I like can barely get through a sentence without me coughing and creating a whole hassle for our editor. Sorry, Jamie. I'm like, yeah, give me something else that will like destroy me. You know, you gotta enjoy yourself. Yeah. Even if Bloody Mary would do that, so she would. And she would eat all the horseradish. <coughs> all right. This is my sign to go get water. And this is your sign to email us your ghost stories. <laughs> you that email. was like a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and this is your sign to buy now. <laughs> Only $8.99. It's a good deal. It is a sweet What deal. are we getting? And if you email now, we'll give it to you free. What are we giving? A ghost story. Uh, uh, us ghost? reading the oh. ghost story. Oh, well, a haunting. A haunting for a you. Haunting. Email us your ghost stories or anything haunting that you've experienced at Two Girls, One Ghost podcast <coughs> at gmail.com. Also, I want to know more about Damien the Goat. I forgot. We forgot to talk about yeah, Damien. Damien sounds Damien interesting. Interesting. Rate and review us on iTunes. Tell all your friends about the podcast because this is a pyramid scheme. And if you want to get promoted, you have to tell three people and then they have to tell three people and then you know, it keeps going. That's how it works. Yep. Join our Patreon for ad-free episodes and one week early episodes and bonus content and campfire stories every Tuesday. And thank you so much to Jamie for editing and producing our audio and video. We're very grateful for you. And thank you to all of you. We love you. And we will see you on the other side. side.